During the BEF's retreat from France in 1940, Charles Harrington was commanding a machine gun company of the 2nd Cheshires, which was acting as the rearguard of the 1st Division. Here he talks about his escape from Dunkirk. I was commanding machine gun company, and so I was attached to the 13th, 18th Armoured Regiment uh, to make the rear guard up for the 1st Division. There was all <laughs> absolute turmoil of people on the roads trying to find the 13th. I remember calling into the woods, 13th, yes, here we are. And so we linked up with them. And then the Germans did come on, and they had some little skirmishes. The first lesson really came out, which everybody's forgotten, I think, that everybody got terribly tired. And it got worse and worse. The tiredness led to sort of exhaustion and dottiness. And two, two corps core command had to be carried off on stretchers. Everybody went on and on and on. And everybody tried to stay awake. And, um, and people don't make good decisions when, when they're tired. However, we continue going, and then suddenly we found the masses of marching, red-faced soldiers you know, in the night all plonking along, vehicles pushing through them. And um, we were then making our way towards the coast, and we were stopped. I went to try and find what the hell had happened. Very efficient and smart military policemen said, all vehicles in that field are and, and immo immobilized and could proceed on foot. And I said, I've been told must we carry on. So we drove on and then the only excitement then, there were lots of planes flew over and there was occasional shelling attacks but the only hand-to-hand -hand fight I had was with the French. Coming back on a motorbike they grabbed me and tried to take the bike off and I luckily had the presence of mind to keep the engine going. I should have pulled my pistol out to the shop. Them. All they wanted was to vent my motorbike. The next time we had the French was when we were going down the beach to our rendezvous to get in the water. A whole hundreds of French wouldn't let us through. Well, they didn't shoot us, but they were pretty bad tempered. And the most commemorable one, and the one that the soldiers didn't like doing, was that I was told to destroy the naffy liquor dump, whiskey, gin, right on the sand um, on the road at the top. This was a play one. And so was on the, his band gun. I said, go on. He said, must I, sir? It's an awful shame. And I said, it must do it. Of course, you were all very jealous of drinking. And um, as I say, after the French would let us along, I got there was a sort of steep bit of track. I managed it. And we all pushed and drove in and drove in to Dunkirk on the seaward side of it. And I didn't know it. And so I saw a French sentry outside of the building. So I went in, and it was there was this French headquarters sitting down to dinner, white tablecloths, or so it appeared, with silver and glass on the table. I said, no, no, excuse me, sir. We, oh, he said, very good English. He said, you just follow all those soldiers, the British running away, and follow your find it. So anyhow, we immobilized our trucks. We all walked across the sand, and we carried our weapons, and into the water, low tide, no way, shining um, phosphorescent on on we marched up to our knees and then sat all around us there were empty boats ships boats and there was no panicking to get in and if there wasn't enough room people would just bug it off and find another one and this thames fire boat picked us up and then transferred us all to a paddle to a paddle steamer i did know its name it was about the emperor of india or something like that based on Charles describes the unexpected reception which soldiers received on their return to Britain. Oh, we thought we were going to be booed when we got back. And we thought, you know, we, we should have uh, stayed on longer. But it was in such a bugger's muddle. No, when we got to Dover, we were absolutely flabbergasted because there were girls and lovely old ladies giving us cups of tea and clean pairs of socks, and, you know, as if we'd won the war. We went then to Aldershot and we went into a camp uh, just outside, and all, all prepared, frightfully efficient, new battle dress and everything, a blanket to lie on, the marquees, 
and um, trucks laid on take us into all the And I rang up, very nice girl, thought oh, might be terribly worried. And since it became a, a sort of grand, grand, grand film star called Phyllis Calvert. And so I rang up, I said, I'm back. She said, Charlie, how lovely, where have you been? <laughs> Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.